My name is Connor Coonley and this is our analysis for the Coca-Cola Bottling Company. Um, I will be covering the SWOT analysis for the company. Starting off for the external analysis, we have the opportunities and threats. On the opportunity side, um, in the industry environment, we have diversification. Uh, this is the beverage market is constantly evolving to incorporate additional products. This means new opportunities for bottling and distribution. The second one would be threat of entry. The threat of entry is low because potential competitors face high entry barriers, such as substantial investments in manufacturing equipment and the creation of distribution channels. On the threat side for the industry environment, we have uh, buyer bargaining power. Uh, this states that large retail purchasers issue packaging requirements that must be met in order for products to be stored and stocked in stores. Uh, second for this, we have the intensity of rivalry among established firms. Uh, there is intense competition from other beverage companies and it's negatively affecting Coca-Cola and all of its supporting companies, including the Coca-Cola bottling company. On the general environment side for opportunities, we have expanding market. Demand for the carbonated beverage market is increasing at a rapid rate overseas, leading to, leading to the need for additional bottling and distribution plants. Secondly, we have te technological force. The increased use of robotics on bottling assembly lines has helped to cut the cost of hourly workers and reduce the number of mistakes made by human error. For the threat side on general environment, we have economic forces. The rising cost of raw materials such as aluminum and plastics is leading to increased bottling and packaging cost. Secondly, we have sociocultural forces. Increasingly, customers are seeking more environmentally friendly bottles and containers, forcing manufacturers to develop new technology for delivering carbonated beverages. On the internal side for the analysis, we have the strengths and the weaknesses. First, for strengths, we have intangible resources. Uh, Coca-Cola Bottling Company is backed by the brand Coca-Cola, uh, therefore they, are well, they have a well-known reputation in the industry. Secondly, for the strength side on the internal analysis, we have the capabilities. Over the years, Coca-Cola Bottling Company has successfully designed strategies needed to develop substantial competencies in beverage bottling operations. On the internal analysis for weaknesses, we have tangible resources. The Coca-Cola Bottling Company primary industry is bottling carbonated beverages. The lack of product diversification makes the company weak. Secondly, for this section, we have tangible resource again. Uh, this comes from a continuing pressure from customers and the government to become more environmentally conscious. Coca-Cola Bottling Company is using a large amount of financial and human resources in research and development to create more sustainable bottles. Now that I've covered the SWOT analysis portion, Michael will now cover the strategies. My name is Michael Bowen and I'm going to be covering the business strategy section of the report. So for the corporate strategy, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company's corporate focus is on a dominant business strategy. The company's income is made primarily through the sale of plastic and glass bottles. For the 2016 physical year, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company's net sales were divided 84% bottled and canned sales, while only 16% were post-mix sales. This states that the company has low levels of diversification and is focused on a dominant corporate strategy. With this information, you can tell that the bottling company has many years of experience in bottling drinks and has made contacts outside of the Coca-Cola company for revenue. Next, I will be discussing the generic strategy. This section will focus on the plastic contour bottle that the Coca-Cola Bottling Company sells to the few hand-picked customers they have. The strategy that the company uses to sell the brand is focused on, or is focused, cost leadership. They use this strategy because they sell to hand-picked and choice companies which use the Coca-Cola company, or such as the Coca-Cola Company and the Dr. Pepper Company. Also, the plastic bottles they use are cheap to make. They can price these bottles how they see fit since their buyers do not have many places to go to have their syrup placed into these bottles for sales and distribution. The last section I will be covering is international strategies. The Coca-Cola Bottling Company does not have an international strategy since they operate only within the United States. The Coca-Cola Bottling Company is a bottler and distributor for the parent company Coca-Cola. 
While Coca-Cola is sold in over 200 countries worldwide, the parent company is in charge of the distribution of the bottling franchise, both domestic and internationally. Currently, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company only has rights to distribute and market products to the Southeast, Midwest, and Mid-Atlantic regions within the United States. The ability for expansion in foreign markets is left to the discretion of the Coca-Cola parent company who manages the international competitive strategy. Next, we will be talking about corporate governance. I'm Austin Morton and I'm going to talk a little bit about the structure of the company as well as the corporate governance. Uh, for the vertical structure of the company, uh, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company uses a tall structure with many levels of management. Uh, most larger companies have to use a tall structure because it's just nearly impossible for them at their size to be using a flat structure. Uh, the levels of management include low and high level managers as well as many executives like the CFO and the CEO. For the horizontal structure, the Coca-Cola Bottling Company uses a functional structure utilizing many specialized departments. These specialized departments include, but are not limited to, the Human Resources Department, Manufacturing, Sales, and Distribution. For the corporate governance uh, of the company, uh, we said that the corporate governance of the company does not pose a problem at this time. Uh, there is, however, a possible corporate trust issue. Uh, this consists of the CEO actually being the chair of the board of directors. This can cause a mistrust because there really is no limiting power with him uh, inside the company. We're going to kick it over uh, to Abraham. He's going to do the problem with the company. Hello, my name is Ibrahim Mahana, and I will be talking about the issue that we focused on to the Coca-Cola Bottling Company. The issue we as a team chose to hit, uh, tackle in terms, is the rapid expansion of the Coca-Cola Bottling Company throughout all of its available areas. Uh, the biggest issues that the company will or is facing currently is the misunderstanding of what's going on financially. Due to the rapid expansion of the company, the finances will eventually start to become less available to the higher-ups at the rapid at the rapid method that they're used to when the company was a smaller one. Uh, the second issue that the rapid expansion would cause is inadequate internal systems and procedures. It's a big issue due to the fact that the bottling company was small. They're not used to a larger, more paperwork, more red line, heavy work environment that the bigger area of, of the company has given them. Uh, fast growth amplifies errors. Uh, ordering, shipping, and ordering syrup from the Coca-Cola bottling company now has come with a lot more red tape due to the company not wanting to deal with lower distributors but the actual higher up managers that they're used to dealing with. Another one which is a major one is the diminishing profits due to them buying more and more areas the Coca-Cola bottling company consolidated is facing more issues when it comes to profiting from sales. And the last one hasn't yet started to, to the company's culture and heavy influencing any new areas that they've been buying but employee dissatisfaction will start to occur in larger companies due to the fact that they have to work more uh, they have to have more hours invested into the company than the smaller version of the Coca-Cola Bottling Company Consolidated has been so far. Uh, the next person who will be talking about the solution that, of the problem that we decided to hit. My name is Alex Hilliard and I'll be discussing solutions to the various problems that Coca-Cola Bottling Company is currently facing. Rapid expansion can be tricky for any company to deal with. One thing Coca-Cola Bottling Company could look into to get this expansion under control is finding a CFO or higher management who has experience dealing with companies undergoing such rapid expansion. In its current state, Coca-Cola Bottling Company is not creating much to show for with all their expansion. This CFO or higher management could give valuable input on how to deal with the intricacies of running such a large company. 
If such a solution is not possible, establishing a business service center designed to optimize operations by delegating the tasks associated with this rapid expansion to people who have experience with dealing with this expansion could go a long ways in handling this issue. Along with finding experience management, Coca-Cola Consolidated should consider pulling back or at least putting a halt to their expansion. Their growth rate is not matching the company's net income each year. This shows that the company's current expansion has done nothing other than add strain to the company and its many employees. In this presentation, we have covered the SWOT analysis, corporate strategies and structures, addressed any potential corporate governance issues, and discussed the problem facing Coca-Cola Bottling Company along with solutions to this problem. Thank you for watching our presentation on Coca-Cola Bottling Company.